Okay, what's the proof that Luke portrays Jesus as pre-existent? Luke 3, verses 1 to 6. Pay attention. Luke 3, verse 1 to 6. Let's go into meat. You got a lot, a lot of meat today. By the grace of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, our God gets the glory. Who's real, who's humble, not proud or arrogant. May we love Jesus by obedience. Luke 3, verses 1 to 6. In the 15th year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, Pontius Pilate, being governor of Judea, and Herod being Tetrarch of Galilee, and his brother Philip Tetrarch of the region of Uteria, and Trachonitis, Licentius, Tetrarch of Abilene, and the high priest, priesthood of Anas and Caiaphas, the word of God came to John, the son of Zechariah and the woman. Now watch who John is. Matthew agrees, Mark agrees, and John agrees. The Gospel of John. This is who John is. Now watch. Who is John the Baptist? Who is John the Baptist? According to Luke, which Matthew, Mark, and John agree. And he went into all the region about the Jordan, preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. As it is written. So who is John the Baptist? As it is written in the book of the words of Isaiah the prophet, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, Yahuwah, make his path straight. Every valley shall be filled and every mountain and hill shall be brought low and the crooked shall be made straight and the rough ways shall be made smooth. And all flesh shall see the salvation of God. According to Luke, Mark as well, and the Gospel of John and Matthew, John the Baptist is the voice that the prophet Isaiah said would be sent in the wilderness preparing people for the coming of God. Let me show you. Watch here. Let me show you that from the prophecy itself. Luke just quoted Isaiah 40, verses 3 to 5. I'm going to be quoting the Legacy Standard Version because it uses the word Yahweh. So you can get the point. Guys, please listen or you're not going to see how easy it is to destroy these Bible butchers. They're clowns. Here is the prophecy. John is this voice crying out in the wilderness. This voice announced by Isaiah 700 years before John was born would be sent to prepare people for who? Pay attention. Look at who this voice is preparing for. Isaiah 40, verses 3 to 5. A voice is calling, prepare the way of Yahweh. He's not preparing for a prophet or a priest or an angelic creature. The voice is telling people, get ready for Yahweh in the wilderness. Make smooth in the desert a highway for our God. So the voice is telling people, Yahweh our God is coming. Be ready, people. Now, Luke told you John is that voice, which is why he's in the wilderness, baptizing in the wilderness, because he's telling people Yahweh our God is coming in the wilderness. Exactly, XJW, Laura. You can use this in, against the Jehovah's Witnesses. Now watch. Let every valley be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low, and let what? Let's read it. Right? And let the rough plains, let me quote the rest of it. Oh, it's right here. Sorry. And let the rough ground become a plain and the rugged terrain, a broad valley. Then the glory of Yahweh will be revealed and all flesh will see it together for the mouth of Yahweh has spoken. So let's see if you're catching it. John is the voice that Isaiah prophesied over 700 years before the birth of John would come in the wilderness. And he would be the voice telling people, Yahweh, our God, is coming. You will see his glory. Get ready. So John is not preparing for a creature or a mere prophet or an angelic creature. He's preparing for the coming of Yahweh, Israel's God. Get ready. He's going to show up. And in case you still don't see that point, look what Isaiah 40, verses 8 to 11 says. Specifically 9 to 11. Okay, watch. Who's coming? Isaiah, an angelic creature? No. A mere human prophet? No. Who's coming? Yahweh, our God. Watch here. Isaiah 40, verses 8 to 11. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God stands forever. Get yourself up on a high mountain. 
O Zion, bearer of good news, raise up your voice powerfully, O Jerusalem, bearer of good news. Why? Raise it up. Do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, behold your God. Your God is coming. Yahweh, our God, we're going to see his glory visibly. He's coming. All right. What is he going to do when he comes? Watch here. If you don't get this argument, you're not going to get the point. Behold, Lord Yahweh, Adonai Yahuwah, will come. Not a mere creature. Yahweh is coming, folks. You're going to see his glory visibly. He's coming with his strength, his arm, ruling for him. Behold, his reward is with him and his recompense before him. Like a shepherd, he will shepherd his flock. In his arm, he will gather the lambs and carry them in his bosom. He will gently lead the nursing ewes. All right, now, let's see if you got it. According to Luke, and I'm going to show you the same thing from Matthew and Mark, Lord willing, tomorrow. Okay? John the Baptist begins his ministry in the wilderness because he's the voice that Isaiah said over 700 years before John's birth would prepare the people, get ready for Yahweh our God, make a way for Yahweh, a highway for our God, because you're going to see his glory, people. So is that clear? Let's see if you got it. Is that clear that John the Baptist will prepare the people for the coming of Yahweh God, whose glory they will see? Is that clear? Do we get that? Before I move on to who that Yahweh is that John prepares for. All right. Now watch this. All right. But who is John preparing for? Luke 3, 15 to 17. Luke 3, 15 and 17. And I'm going to be repeating the same point when we go into Matthew and Mark because they all quote this. They all quote Isaiah 40. They all apply it to John. And they all have John preparing for Christ. Luke 3, 15 to 17. As the people were in expectation and all men questioned in their hearts concerning John, whether perhaps he, he were the Christ, John answered them all, I baptize you with water. But he who's mightier than I is coming. The thong of whose sandals I'm not worthy to untie. Let me explain what that means historically. It was uh, the custom of people to have house servants. And the house servants would bring water for the owner and his guests to wash their feet. Because, remember, they had sandals and they would walk in open <clears throat> streets, paths, and their feet would get dusty. So it was the job of the servant to unloose the sandals of the owner and the guests and bring water to have their feet washed. What John is saying is, the one who's coming after me, he's so great, I'm not good enough to be his slave. I'm not even worthy to be a servant, his slave, to unloose and carry his sandals. That's how mighty and great he is. And then he goes on to show how great he is because he now tells you he does something that God does, right? He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. So here's my challenge to all you anti-Trinitarians. Quote a single passage in the Old Testament where someone other than God will pour out the Spirit, fill people with the Spirit, immerse his servants in the power and presence and life of the Spirit. Show me a single verse where someone other than God does that. You can't find it. It doesn't exist. So you get an idea of who this one is. He's so great, so much more powerful than I. I'm not good enough to be a slave and carry his sandals and wash his feet. And he will immerse you in the power, presence, and life of the Spirit and fire. Now, what does that mean, fire? dum diddy dum 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 Watch here. His winnowing fork, you use a winnowing fork to separate the wheat from the chaff. At harvest time, when you gather the wheat, you winnow the wheat to separate the wheat from the chaff. The chaff is useless. The wheat is useful. And so he's going to separate mankind as wheat from chaff. So what is he going to do with the wheat and the chaff? His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor. So he owns the world. He owns it. And to gather the wheat into his granary so it's his barn. He owns the barn. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. So let me explain what it means he will immerse you in Holy Spirit and fire. You guys ready? Listen. Learn context. 
Notice this one. He owns the harvest. It's his granary. That's the world. He owns the barn. That's the kingdom. And he will then destroy you with unquenchable fire. So he owns the world. He owns everyone in the world. He owns the barn, which is the kingdom. He owns the wheat, which are believers. And he owns the chaff, which are unbelievers. And he can do with them as he sees fit. This one coming. Now, when it says baptize you in the Holy Spirit and fire, John told you what the fire is. Christ either comes to immerse you in the Spirit and gives you life by the Spirit, or he'll immerse you in his wrath as a consuming fire. Either you'll be baptized in the Spirit by him or in fire. If fire, that's destruction. If in the Spirit, that is life eternal. But he's the one who does both. He will baptize some in the Spirit, baptize some in fire as punishment. He does both. He will save or condemn. He will give life or destroy you because he's the judge of the living and the dead. You understand? And who is this though? Who is this that's greater than John? That John is not good enough to be a slave, to carry his sandals and wash his feet? That baptizes in the Holy Spirit something only God does or destroy you in his wrath and his consuming fire? Who owns the world, owns the harvest, owns the wheat, owns the chaff, meaning owns humanity, and owns the barn, the kingdom? Who is it? Well, here you go. Acts 19, verse 4. Acts 19, verse 4. Here you go. John, who are you preparing for, John? Who are you preparing for, John? Acts 19, verse 4. Here you go. And Paul said, John baptized with the baptism of repentance, telling the people to believe in the one who is to come after him, that is Jesus. Whoa, 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 wait. Luke and Acts confirm Jesus is the one that John prepared for. So John is telling you Jesus is the one who's mightier than me, greater than me, who's so great I'm not good enough to be a slave and carry his thongs or untie them or wash his feet, who will then immerse you in the Holy Spirit if you're a believer, something only God does according to the Old Testament, or destroy you in his wrath, consume you in his fire because he's a consuming fire. Jesus is the one who owns the wheat and the chaff, believers and unbelievers alike, who owns the harvest, the world, and owns the kingdom. Jesus. But now let me ask you a question. Didn't they say, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and John, which I'll show you, but we'll focus on Luke. Didn't Luke say, John is the voice of Isaiah, chapter 40, verses 3 and 5. In case you missed it, here it goes. One more time. And the high priesthood of Anas and Caiaphas, the word of God came to John, the son of Zechariah in the wilderness. And he went into all the region about the Jordan, preaching a baptism of repentance, right? For the forgiveness of sins. And then watch. What does it say? As it is written in the prophet Isaiah. And I'm going to read verse four as well. As it is in the book of the words of Isaiah, the prophet, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. So John is that voice that Isaiah said would be shouting in the wilderness, get ready for God, our Lord, Yahweh, our God. And here's the prophecy again, Isaiah 40, verse 3. Let's see if you get it. A voice is calling, prepare the way of, of the Lord for Yahweh, Isaiah 40, verse 3. In the wilderness, make smooth in the desert a highway for our God. So let's see if you're getting it. And we're going to wrap up. Let's see if you got it. Luke says, John the Baptist, according to Luke, John the Baptist is the voice of Isaiah. According to Isaiah, this voice, who's John the Baptist, is going to announce to people, Yahweh, their God, our God, is coming, and you will see his glory. And yet, Luke tells us, John the Baptist was sent to prepare people for Jesus. So let's help me out, because I'm not that logical. John, the voice of Isaiah that announces to people, Yahweh, our God, is coming. Get ready. You're going to see his glory. But John, according to Luke, is preparing people for the coming of Christ. Get ready. Christ is coming, and it's Jesus. Therefore, if John is preparing people for the coming of Yahweh, their God, our God, 
whom they will see visibly, whose glory they will see visibly. And yet John announces, it is Jesus that I'm sent to prepare. Then who is Jesus, according to Luke, according to Isaiah's prophecy? Who is Jesus? Let's see if you got it. According to the prophecy of Isaiah that John and Jesus fulfill, Jesus is who? He is Yahweh, our God. He is the God of Isaiah, the Yahweh, Israel's God, whom the voice would announce, is about to appear, and you're going to see his glory. How then can Bart Ehrman or Raymond Brown say that neither Matthew nor Luke nor Mark taught Jesus' divine pre-human existence? If all of them announce Jesus is Yahweh, Israel's God, he is that Yahweh that Isaiah said would come, who would be seen, whose glory would be seen, he is the Yahweh that John the Baptist, as the voice in Isaiah, prepared people <clears throat> in order to get them ready for his coming. How then can you argue that Luke denied Jesus' preeminent existence when Luke has just announced Jesus is Isaiah's God, Yahweh our God, Israel's God, who comes in the flesh, whom John was sent to prepare? What are you guys smoking? What are you smoking, Bart Ehrman? What are you smoking, Raymond Brown? Is Luke 3 not in your Bible? Is Acts 19, 4 not in your Bible? So to sum up, Luke just confirmed Jesus is Yahweh, the God of Israel, who became flesh from the virgin, meaning the virgin conceived by the spirit, the physical body, the human nature of Yahweh. She had Yahweh being conceived in her womb. She was carrying Yahweh, Israel's God, in her womb who is the Son of God, who works with the Spirit. So there's your Trinity, because he's not the Spirit and he's not the Father. Whom John said, owns the harvest, owns the wheat and the chaff, meaning he owns the world, and believers and unbelievers alike. Whom John said, will immerse you in the Holy Spirit if you're a believer, something only Yahweh does, or consume you in his wrath with unquenchable fire if you're an unbeliever, and who owns the barn, the kingdom, who's so great and mighty, then John said, I'm not even worthy to be a slave, to carry his sandals or wash his feet. Was that clear? Was that clear?